Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good morning everybody. Today we will be discussing few pumps which are also dry and uh, concepts are little different compared to the other dry pumps. The first half I will be talking scroll pump which is getting more and more popular as a backing pump, dry backing pump to turbo molecular pumps etc. In the second half I will talk another dry pumping but it is not a mechanical pump type, it is a sorption based pumps, but which are very popular since long like physical adsorption, chemical adsorption based pumps, which are routinely being used in high tech industries. Once upon a time, they are the only pumps because these pumps scroll, screw, they have come only 30, 40 years back, but high tech was there since long, x-ray tubes for example. So, all of them use some chemical getters which act like a local pumps. So, those concepts also we will read it. That way we will be completing the dry vacuum pumps in the medium and uh, low vacuum range and this is required because dryness is a prerequisite and cleanliness is a prerequisite for ultra high vacuum pumps. They are also dry but in molecular level and clean but these are prerequisites because right from the atmosphere the way you bring the vacuum down is very important. So, vacuum up, pressure down, this is the mistake one should not do, okay. So, high vacuum means low pressure, fine. Let us first start with the scroll pump, then we will go to the sorption concepts and uh, sorption based pumps. So, the concepts that are going to be covered in this class are introduction to scroll pump, construction and working principle as usual some advantages and disadvantages of this pump. Then we will switch over to the mechanism of absorption, little bit of physics I will talk so that you get a feel of what is that. Then thermodynamics is of course, very interesting subject for everybody. So, I will also touch upon that. Then we will also go for uh, some pumps based on absorption called physical absorption pumps and uh, sublimation pumps which are basically chemical adsorption pumps which are very important in modern day ultra high vacuum technology particularly in electronic industry or x-ray tubes or space and nuclear etc. Okay. Okay. Scroll pump as the name itself says there are two partners and one is stationary other is scrolling around it. Uh, so, there are uh, Varieties of scroll pumps being manufactured by several industries all over the world. I have given few figures. Uh, they are all very good pumps and uh, very compact. It is easy to open and close. Uh, unlike other pumps here, uh, they say, because I have never opened and I do not have much experience that way. I, I am only a user. But I have seen these pumps in various industries and various companies also. They say that it can be easily opened up and again repaired and closed very fast. That is the main advantage of this and it also produces very good quality dry pump and with good enough vacuum. For example, when you say dry membrane pump, it produces 10 millibar, you require another uh, high little high pressure stage associated in the turbo molecular pump so that its output is matching to this 10 millibar. Here it is somewhat better than that. So, that way it is also acting like a very good uh, quality backing pumps to the ultra high vacuum pumps. In fact, is, that is one of the major applications of scroll vacuum pump. Okay. When if you want to go to chemical or rugged applications very large scale, of course, you need to go for uh, screw vacuum pumps and uh, claw pumps. But all of them produce same level of vacuum, 
then y axis pumping speed is there as axis pressure so vacuum applications are better and better vacuum bigger larger and larger pumping speeds so some pumps have got very good thing this side some pumps have got very good thing so you have to choose judiciously which application requires what they are positive displacement pumps as usual scroll pumps and they are very dry pumps main advantage is relatively smooth in action silent and it can be integrated in a air conditioned laboratory without much of contamination and it, you feel that it is just there uh, it is not going to interfere with your activities and very nice looking thing okay and uh, its downtime is also less even if there is some problem you can quickly repair with a less even with a little bit of uh, expertise you may get from the training you can easily do it okay and uh, it has relatively high pressure ratio that is compression ratio but main problem here is low volumetric displacement that is good enough for certain applications cleanliness is more important headache freeness is more important but displacement also is important when you go for large scale industries okay you have to keep that in mind and uh, it is not suitable for uh, chemically aggressive applications uh, uh, because uh, of various limitations in the internal construction of the pump okay and uh, it is uh, will produce a vacuum with almost no contamination that is another advantage if process contaminates then that's a problem okay pump will not contaminate the process but small scale but very neat pump okay from the figure you can feel it before i even explain because engineers nowadays students everybody wants animation and everybody wants uh, okay uh yeah, some figures nice looking figures so i have given few figures here uh you can understand the right side i have given four figures they first let us understand the construction it contains two identical scrolls which are more or less concentric and one of the scroll scroll means a spiral type of thing in a same plane and one scroll is moving other scroll is stationary this moving apparently looks like it is rotating but actually it is not rotating uh, because uh, the mechanisms are such uh, it will be orbiting but it will not be rotating okay in the process the outer scroll and the inner scroll touch each other almost touch type thing at various locations and uh, again open it up so that way this way pockets of air gets locked up after some time it moves forward because it automatically compresses from one pocket to the other pocket in the annular volume which is subdivided into small small pockets because of that action the people who have designed this are very intelligent fellows fellows how this crawling action is there there are lot of mathematics in this this motion with the phase shift and how are you going to do all that Uh, and uh, of course realizing these things with suitable seals on top and bottom how they are going to rotate how the central shaft is connected all that is a engineering marvel okay so that way the gas comes if you look at the animation the gas comes from the periphery and enters and locks up and again gets compressed because the spaces are alternatively getting expanded compressing like that so the gas now suddenly they are showing for some time gas sometime action but actually it is a continuous action in pockets and these are four stages uh, these are various molecules some hazy cloud type of things are there so they enter somewhere and sometimes it is closer to each other these scrolls somewhere they are far away finally this is the exhaust port and where exactly shaft is also there which is trying to move these things not rotate uh, but because of that attachment there is a locking of that rotary motion so it will automatically get uh, uh, sort of you know like uh, cam principle involved in ic engines type thing actually something is rotating but something is moving in a linear fashion and a little bit of rocky type thing etc so this sort of uh, motion is created and uh, you will get different volumes at different times and here the suction is there here 
the final exhaust is there. Okay, and they do not touch each other. Okay, and most important thing is movable scroll, but it is not rotating; it only orbits. Okay. Now, what is the level of vacuum? Again, point one torque. Most of these dry pumps and all, they peak at one torque. Even roots blower also peaks at one torque because of compression ratios. But it has got additional advantage that it can boost any pump at the lower pressures that way because that volumetric displacement is quite high there and all. Why one torque and all? If you go into physics, time it will not be there. Uh, of course, in one word, I can tell. the gaps or clearances are of the order of uh, the mean free paths okay from there you can calculate if you go look into wikipedia or any other papers on the scroll pumps etc and further if you go to the back references you will understand where exactly why exactly this compression ratios are peaking and where the displacement is maximum why ultimate vacuum is this much why compression ratio so basically good compression ratio but ultimate vacuum is less pumping speeds are also more or less reasonable 30 meter cube per hour type of thing. okay so with uh, this introduction uh, you can look into this uh, again and again later at your leisure if you have some doubts you can call me uh, because i'll cover the other aspect also uh, like uh, adsorption pumps so i again repeat here advantages are there is no pulsations a quite smooth pump and it uh, is a long path that way you will have a quite a good of compression ratio slowly happening over the path from the intake to the discharge and there are no discharge walls so no noise and uh, wear and tear is not much okay it will have a longer life and a low temperature and no lubrication is involved totally oil free okay and it can be disconnected in few minutes i told you repairing is a little easier of course there will be some disadvantages because no uh, very larger sizes these spiral shaped seal gaskets which are to be there to isolate it from the atmosphere and all they need to be replaced in few months and if you are used to it it's not a problem and if there is a particulate content coming from the loading where it is evacuating that can create trouble because it will interfere and it may spoil the action or seals of that pump so that way this is a good uh, dry pump like any other pumps scroll pumps mostly it is being used uh, as a backing from for the turbo molecular pumps for small volumes it can also produce very good vacuum levels particularly medium vacuum level okay so once we understood uh, scroll pump let us go to the other dry pumps they are dry <coughs> but they are not uh, any mechanical pumps they are physical chemical pumps let us see they all depend on a common principle called sorption so before i explain physical pumps and chemical pumps based on this sorption let us try to spend it is worthwhile spending few minutes to understand what is sorption okay sorption is an interaction of a gas coming to the surface and how it is going to interact with the surface sometimes it touches and it gets absorbed initially on the surface and slowly diffuse inside and get absorbed so if it goes inside that is called absorption if it stays it is called adsorption it is taught in our school days also sorption is the interaction of a gas molecules with a solid molecule and if it goes inside absorption adsorption means adjacent sorption that's why it is called adsorption it is just next to that while going it is free molecules while touching it has formed a thin film you might be seeing whenever we use very new gold ring or something initially it is shiny afterwards you will find some color discolored because some oxides have been formed that is also adsorption first physically it got adsorbed and if there is any chemical action or something it may form a oxide which is a chemical so if it is going and also forming a compound that is called chemical adsorption if it is only going and staying there like our water filter charcoal etc it stays there because of cavities and all uh, there are such things if only surface without any chemical reaction they are called ad physical adsorption so i have given you 
a small uh, classification sorption with that definition is subdivided into adsorption and absorption if gas stays on the surface it is called adsorption if gas goes inside it is called absorption chemistry people know this quite well uh, because even in 11th class 12th class we are taught this thing and in inter internet you will get very good uh, explanation they have got lot of applications in chemistry and pharmacy and pharmaceutical applications etc chemical reactions reactors okay within this adsorption there is a physical adsorption and chemical adsorption which i have already explained physical adsorption is the forces between the gas molecule and the surface are van der waal forces on the surface okay there are unsaturated uh, force uh, bonds available on the surface of a solid with these molecules they would like to get some sharing they will make them stay with us temporary guest that is called adsorption and staying there making a permanent bond real bond not uh, dangling bonds which are dispersive on the surface but real bond in a chemical reaction that electron electron shared or covalent bond or some bond is formed or ionic then it is chemical adsorption that is another name for chemical adsorption is gettering so you can use adsorption either physically or chemically but popularly if you are using physically people call it as physisorption and if it is chemically the people call it as chemisorption but sometimes chemisorption is popularly called as gettering and this gettering along with ionization with uh, cryogenic temperatures they will form ultra high vacuum we will see later when we go for uhv technology and this is a prelude to the ultra high vacuum technology this is a post seen from the dry technology they are dry pumps they are also going to take you to ultra high vacuum with some more classifications but right now what i am going to talk is still medium scale only okay. so both the processes are used to produce vacuum both physical adsorption and chemical adsorption and when it comes to thermodynamics those who are having some knowledge of uh, okay enthal enthalpy entropy etc etc it is very easy uh, you will see two curves here uh, you can read all those things at your leisure Uh, there is a simple variation between physical adsorption and chemical adsorption you any even school boys can understand if you try to understand at atomic level basically gas molecule let us say take one molecule molecule is coming it is got a free energy what is free energy and i am not going to discuss thermodynamics right now in detail later we will see if necessary so if you look at the energy the energy when it comes to the nearer what is the distance this is the surface this is the coordinate of the solid surface this is my zero let us say it is that this is my zero so surface distance from this it is coming 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 it is touching when it touches it is zero distance so molecule is coming from far away that is my x axis and if it touches now what is y axis its energy associated with its kinetic energy or thermal energy so that energy is constant at distance but when it comes to very nearer to a particular surface solid surface because of attraction physics people know very well any attractive interaction will try to reduce the free energy will try to reduce the energy content there are in fact there are lots of statistical explanations for it and all you know boltzmann statistics in bose einstein condensation so this ground state people say in quantum mechanics etc that means interaction even in magnetism ground state is there okay so energy will come down when you go nearer to a some fellow because you are not that free now so your energy is less you are little bound so this is called bound state but if you go still further then repulsion will take place it is attracting but you have to maintain a distance even in life you have to do that you have to maintain a distance with everybody but at the same time you have to have a friendliness same thing so molecule came here it is not as free it wants to go there but if it goes very near to zero then again energy increases okay so this is a chemical chemistry people know these things uh, energy diagrams same diagram in chemical adsorption from far away it is coming at a particular distance minimum energy is there 
But if you give some activation energy by through some other route, then it will again increase. But that activation will make you again down at that time. That means you have to give some energy and take much more. So then it will fall into a still deeper state. This sort of energy diagram is associated with the chemical adsorption. But there again, if you come very nearer to that, energy will finally increase. So this will be my equilibrium distance with activation. This will be my equilibrium distance at which they have come to an equilibrium. That much distance. Whereas in physical adsorption, at this distance. it will form equilibrium it will not touch the surface though we may feel they are touching but they are not free also so that is the minimum energy if they are free then energy will be this see so the little bound it is energy is less this much feeling is enough and in chemical terms for example active this uh, heat of adsorption is same as uh, energy of desorption that means how much energy you have to give it to desorb back again if you heat it up or something again the molecule can come out okay so that desorption energy is same as adsorption but here it is not like that the desorption energy if you are measuring from here some artificial energy that you are giving it as activation energy has to be added to that initial energy difference so hc plus ea is actually desorption energy these are well understood in chemistry so i am not going to go into very much depth let us use it for vacuum technology because this is going to play a very important role in interfaces surfaces etc in semiconductor physics x ray physics and uh, analytical instruments and uh, biotechnology everywhere we will see an applications come so physisorption pump based on physical adsorption we have a typical pumping system in our laboratory i have been teaching in our lab course to our students okay so here Uh, there are two vessels connected to a common chamber and there are also some brackets are there to which you can support a liquid nitrogen vessel from this liquid nitrogen container which is again double walled having vacuum insulation see cryogenic things also require vacuum and cryogenic produces vacuum again so that and all we will discuss when you deal with cryogenic applications later and by pouring liquid nitrogen your adsorption becomes physical adsorption becomes physical cryo adsorption and when it's cryo adsorption when the molecules are going from on infinite space when they are approaching to the surface they are commensurate to the temperature here the molecular velocity half mv square is 3 by 2 kt t when it touches and if you are cooling this surface then it becomes a dull because its reverse journey kinetic energy is not high so that way cryogenic temperatures adsorption physically is more so it is very tough to take it out again like that so this concept can be used to produce vacuum so in a closed room you cannot connect rotary pump or you for some reason oiliness you don't have any pump you don't have any pump you are in space no electricity no 220 volts then what to do you can add some box containing adsorbing material and connect it there and cool it because anyway space is very cold and all and immediately most of the molecules within a closed chamber where you are trying to do some experiments in space shuttle or something those molecules will come this side and get adsorbed so that way you will get vacuum conditions naturally available by a physical vacuum pump which is called adsorption pump so you can keep two such vessels in a laboratory and one vessel is cooled by liquid nitrogen other vessel is getting activated earlier adsorbed gases can be removed through this vent with a stopper which can be closed later these are the two valves and this is the port to the chamber so initially you chill it and open this wall and close this wall the gases will come here and adsorb and at that time the first stage you can close this stopper you can also use this pump to pump another pump so that it not only evacuates the chamber it also evacuates this second stage and everything is more or less some vacuum has reached it's not a small vacuum it can produce one tar 760 tar to one tar it's a quite good vacuum like our dry pumps whatever rotary pumps it can also do that purely adsorption that molecules have not gone out it's not a positive displacement pump molecules have gone to some surface there are two ways of cleaning the room you can with a broom you can sweep the dust out that is positive displacement or else you can sweep it to a corner and put it in a dustbin dust has not gone out of the room but it is clean 
So that way you can produce vacuum in a chamber either by positively displacing the molecules or by putting them adsorbed on a surface and you do your experiments and again you can desorb but you have completed your application. So this is entrapping pumps these are they are not positive displacement pumps ok this is what you should think. If you understand these concepts you go through these things construction is very simple. So, two stage adsorption pumps can be nicely connected to produce very good vacuum without any electricity. These pumps are producing good vacuum which are dry which is very dry vacuum clean vacuum because no oil no electricity ok. These are popularly used for a long time initial days in space technology and nuclear also even though they are used but that is called cryo adsorption pumps of deep low temperatures which are popularly known as cryo pumps they work at 10 Kelvin that we will see when you go to the ultra high vacuum game that is a real game uh, having billions of dollars uh, of investments ok. We will see that later. So, if you understand this physical adsorption pump then let us see the characteristics of it. You have to match the material content to, suppose this is a box containing adsorbing material this is a chamber I connect it through a wall and I have to match sufficient amount so that this space will be evacuated. If it is a larger volume I have to have a larger amount of adsorbing material chill it with liquid nitrogen, chill it with liquid nitrogen and larger amount of materials if I have and if I keep this with above this one it can adsorb and remove the gases ok. So, the matching of the volumes to be pumped to the adsorbing material area is very important. Here I forgot to tell you these molecular sieves which are being manufactured by several companies they are creating very good effect. They are acting like physical adsorbents. They look very small grain, apparent area is few square millimeter, but there are lots of porous, porous material it is. So, a fine atom can go through that and it will be few square meters. Apparent area to naked eye will be square millimeter, the actual area is square meters. Like a distant hills for us, it looks like a triangle, but when you go there, lot more area will be there, similar to that. So, after the manufacturing of molecular sieves etcetera which are now being routinely used for oxygen production in producing adsorption etcetera for uh, corona treatment, corona hospitals etcetera that is also adsorption basically. The same molecular sieves of course, where the some molecules of oxygen they are selective to oxygen or selective to nitrogen depending on the application different adsorbents will be used. The one that is adsorbing is called adsorbent, the thing that is getting adsorbed is adsorbate. So, from the air if you remove nitrogen oxygen enrichment will be there that is how you produce oxygen for other purposes. So, volumes have to be matching to the surface area of this adsorbent. And if you connect two stages that means one stage to other stage you will get better vacuum. Once first stage has produced 10 power minus 1, second stage can go up to minus 2. Instead of adsorption first stage if you use a mechanical first stage rotary pump, second stage as adsorption pump you will get minus 4, but it is an oily pump because in the history of evacuation first time you have used a rotary pump. So, it may be good vacuum, why good? Because this fellow is saturating here because it is unable to absorb certain molecules because like hydrogen, helium etcetera, this adsorbent is not selective to those gases because chamber contains several gases, only few gases it is absorbing. That way it is matching from the volumetric point of view, but only partially for those gases. Or if you have some more gases which are there which are not absorbing, which are not getting absorbed on this surface, then what will happen? It gets saturated again. Whereas, mechanical rotary pump does not differentiate, it can work at both all the gases. That way initially the content of non-adsorbable quantity also is less. So, second adsorption can produce, second stage which is adsorption stage can produce a better vacuum. Well, you have to read all that and lower the temperature adsorption is more, higher the pressure adsorption is more because if you pressurize molecules will try to stick to each other. If you reduce the temperature once it sticks it becomes dull. So, either you make the gas molecules done, dull after touching a surface then you have evacuation or you high pressure time what people do PSA systems for oxygen production higher pressures compressor is required, higher the pressure adsorption is more. People may be wondering why compressor is required for oxygen plants in PSA. Okay. So, that is the thing. So, with this introduction of adsorption pump, this is physical adsorption. 
as soon as you depressurize it will come out this is pressure swing absorption similarly here also if you heat it up again gases will come out it has not formed a permanent bond with the adsorbent go through all this you will understand and it is being used routinely once upon a time to produce 10 power minus 3 tar in ultra high vacuum systems after minus 3 the pump will be isolated you will switch on turbo or ion or cryo pump but initial vacuum this fellow creates you cannot put a rotary pump but now of course scroll pumps and other pumps came okay that is where i am thinking this screw pumps or even claw pumps if they can ensure that the residual gas content at the 10 to power minus 2 tar will not contain oil traces of 10 up to the level of 10 to power minus 9 10 they can be used in space technology in nuclear also and wherever high vacuum is ultra high vacuum is required so that was physical adsorption what is chemical adsorption it is again same material it not only adsorbs surface it also forms a compound but once a layer is formed then it is saturated so remaining gas cannot be adsorbed this problem is solved in titanium sublimation pump titanium can sublime directly so there is a titanium filaments connected through an electrical heating through a feed throughs into the vacuum chamber you pass some electrical heating current it gets hot so hot radiation heat transfer is minimized by water cooling and this is a pumping chamber this whole chamber will be connected as the inlet portion to the main chamber which is to be evacuated okay so that way this is the inlet of the pump this itself is a pump it contains what two titanium filaments when it is hot it produces vapors these vapors have got a tendency to adsorb various gases and form permanent compounds titanium oxide titanium nitride like that of course helium inert gases it cannot form compounds so that way final vacuum that you can obtain can be very sensitive to the chemical composition there okay you have to be careful so this is called titanium sublimation pump here it is called getter pump i can call it as chemical adsorption pump that means gas this titanium gets evaporated and condenses here this condensed layer which is a titanium layer almost like metallic layer it starts adsorbing whatever molecules are there in the residual content of it and these are used in already produced high vacuum conditions before you produce some more ultra high vacuum pumps in between these titanium sublimation pumps can do wonders they can remove slowly slowly some gases which are leaking from various sources into chambers and they can start forming compounds this is used in x-ray tube or vacuum interrupters etc the the small adsorbing material is kept after sealing and evacuating bulbs etc whenever uh, there is some leak or vacuum is spoiled local this set getter material starts absorbing that means there is a pump sitting with you just like we take a charger with us charger but sometimes we take a battery type thing what is that name hmm? power pack okay good so because students definitely know this so power pack already it is there so that way built in pump can be there if you see the hospital atmosphere no x ray tubes etc it has got a vacuum pump sitting inside that pump. that is called chemical adsorption so you read these things at your leisure why titanium titanium can be sublimed if you use any other filament then it we we need that material to be deposited as a thin film but we don't want discontinuity in the filament that is possible without melting if the vapor comes out that's why it is called titanium sublimation produces getter that material titanium after it gets condensed it starts absorbing the oxygen nitrogen molecules selectively from the chamber this way also you can produce vacuum but it starts from 10 to power minus 2 pumping speed is quite high at ultra high vacuum high vacuum side you can connect it with the ion ionization concept which we will see in the ion pump when we go for ultra high vacuum that's called sputter ion pump that sputtering action is producing ions but that ions produced are also atoms basically only minus electron those ions will be selectively adsorbed by this getter material so sputter ion pumps require a getter material but they will enhance the capacity of pumping action just like roots blower enhances the capacity of a rotary pump we will see those pumps little later so with these things we have get an we are getting an idea of physical adsorption chemical adsorption to produce vacuum in a closed chambers 
loading is not much it can do evacuation in small small chambers but very high tech industries so these are routinely used in high tech applications before this dry pump scroll pump and uh, diaphragm pumps came these were the only pumps uh, which were doing ultra high vacuum backing to a next high level ultra high vacuums like cryo pumps okay. so we will have to historically if you read the vacuum technology these were used routinely even now they are used in large scale little large scale applications where other pumps fail and little high vacuum applications like minus 7 minus 8 they are used particularly in semiconductor and electronic industries or uh, x-ray tube industries or even uh, nuclear industries and particle accelerators etc or even space technology you can use because deep space you can use physical adsorption as well as chemical adsorption so with this we have seen today a scroll pump and uh, physical adsorption pump chemical adsorption pump all of them are producing dry vacuum they can also back ultra high vacuum other pumps so this way we are slowly drifting from poor low vacuum medium vacuum high vacuum with diffusion pump etc minus six now we will go towards ultra high vacuum namely turbo molecular pump ion pump and cryo pump where these concepts will be again reinvoked okay so let us now shift to a different story called ultra high vacuum with this introduction thank you